Close your eyes. Breathe in and out a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing. Try to keep your attention right there at the sensation of the breathing as it comes in, as it goes out. If your thoughts go wandering off, just bring it right back. If you start thinking about the sounds of the birds or the sounds of whatever, just bring your mind right back to the sensation of the breath, because the sensation of the breath is still there. As long as you're alive, the breath is coming in, going out, so you can always come back. We're trying to stay here because we're trying to raise the level of the mind. So it's not just running around after sight, sounds, smells, taste, tactile sensations. It's looking inside for its nourishment, inside for its happiness. Inside in good qualities, like we're trying to develop mindfulness here. Mindfulness is the ability to keep something in mind. And alertness, you're alert to what's going on inside. So if the mind wanders off, you know immediately come, bring it right back. If the breath is not comfortable, then you can change it. Try to see what kind of breathing feels really good right now. That helps the mind stay here, because it likes staying with a sense of pleasure. This way you lure your mind up to a higher level, where it's more independent. It's less a slave to things outside. During the Rains Retreat here, we've been considering a series of teachings the Buddha said that create a refuge inside you, or make you your own refuge. There's that basic principle in the Dharma that you have to be your own refuge, because who else are you going to be able to depend on? There's nobody else who can be generous for you, or observe the precepts for you, or meditate for you. You've got to do these things yourself. And so there's a series of qualities that you want to develop so that you can stick with the practice. And this week's quality on the list is a desire for the Dharma, which means a desire to raise the level of your mind to higher and higher levels. In other words, you've heard about generosity and you've practiced some generosity. When you practice generosity, you realize generosity is not enough. What's the next step up? Well, there's virtue. They practice virtue. The next step up is meditation. So you keep raising the level of your mind, raising the level of your practice. Because you know that you can't just hang around where you are. You've got a human body, you've got a human mind, but simply having these things doesn't guarantee that you're going to be human the next time around, or even that your human life this time will be a good human life. It, you have to add more, keep adding more and more good things. There's a story they tell in the canon of a village headman who told some of the other people in the village okay, he was going to observe the five precepts. And they said, well, you're observing the five precepts, we're going to observe the five precepts too. So he went back home and he thought about it for a while, and he said, gee, I'm, I'm their leader, I can't be let them just catch up with me like this. Okay, so the next thing is the eight precepts, so observe the eight precepts. So after a while they noticed he was observing the eight precepts, so they decided to observe them too. Then he started meditating. They decided they noticed he was meditating. He kept on going like this, and finally they all they all became arons. They all became fully awakened. At that point they didn't have to compete with any with, with one another. Of course they weren't really competing. And one of the principles of being desirous of the dharmas, the Buddha said, is also have being pleasing in your conversation. Because some people, when they start talking about high-level dharma, they use it to show off how much they know or to claim that they've attained this or attained that. And that, the Buddha said, is not pleasing conversation. The pleasing conversation is you ask questions, you try to find out more. If there's somebody who needs help, you give it to them, but you don't talk about your attainment or your knowledge. You try to see what's actually helpful for the other person. And that way you really do protect yourself. You protect yourself from the jealousy of other people or from other people's low opinion. They see you go around claiming this, claiming that, and they don't have a high opinion of you all because they see that your, your ego is getting in the way. So you protect yourself on that side. On the other side, you protect yourself from falling down to a lower level. We've got this human treasure, the, the, which is the life of a human being here. Don't let it fall to a lower level. See if you can bring it up to a higher level, the, the level of heaven. Your mind can be like a heavenly being, even though you're here in a human body. Well, then there's the treasure of nirvana, the treasure of true happiness. Happiness that doesn't change. See if, what you can do to work to those treasures. Don't let yourself just rest content with what you've got. Because as the Buddha said, it was by not resting content with his skill, his level of skill, that he was able to attain awakening. We hear that contentment is a good thing in the practice, and contentment with things outside is good. But don't let yourself rest content if there's more to be done inside. Just keep working at it, working at it, having a desire for the Dharma, in other words, attaining higher levels of Dharma inside. And that desire is a good thing. And it's not the case that all desire is bad. The desire to raise the level of the mind is a good thing. That's what protects you from falling down to something lower. So your protection has to come from within. 
but that's the best place because when the protection comes from within, you're in charge. That's the most reliable protection there is. <laughs>